Hello guys. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. So, so one interesting thing today onwards. Okay, we are going to start with Azure. First of all, we'll go with the basics of Azure. So, what is Azure? Why we need to use Azure, even though we have on-premises services. Okay, let's try to understand. Okay, for example. Azure is a cloud services, okay, which is nothing but it's a set of services which they are going to provide for building the applications. Okay, there are n number of things with Azure. Okay, first try to understand to to read the definition. Azure is a comprehensive set of cloud services which is offered by Microsoft. Okay, which is offered by Microsoft. Okay, so when developers and as well as IT professionals, which they wanted to build their applications as well as deploy their applications. And they can manage nothing but they can maintain the applications through Microsoft Global Network and Global Network of Data Centers. Okay, these services include computing power, storage options, data analytics and AI capabilities and much more, much more. Let me give you one simple thing. Okay, how easily you if you wanted to understand how e easily, okay, in a simple way. Okay, Azure is nothing but a suppose on premises is nothing but a suppose you wanted to live in a house. Okay, suppose if you wanted to live in a house, so what you have to do in on in on premises, okay, you have to construct your house, you have to design your house as well as you have to live there. You have to live there. But in Azure, right? In Azure, to simpler way, okay? In how in a simpler way, what you can do, you are going ahead and you are going to rent the house according to your requirement, according to your requirement. So you are going to rent the house. Whenever you are going to be there, then you are going to pay the money. You are going to pay the money. But when it comes to on-premises, right? Irrespective of it, whether you are there or not there, you have to pay the money. So in terms of Azure, right, the major thing is couple of things majorly. Okay, so let's go with the one by one. Okay, what are the differences between Azure versus Azure versus Azure versus on premises? Okay, major thing is okay in Azure, right? Azure is okay. Azure is major thing is okay. You you can scale. Okay, you can. Scale the resources, nothing but a scalability, scalability. Okay, suppose if you wanted to build, right? See, if you, if suppose if you have a 100 GB of data, okay, suppose if you have a, suppose you have a database, okay, you have a database, okay, initially one terabyte is the storage, storage, okay, one TB storage, you want, you have it, okay, you have it. Later point of time, you wanted to increase another one TB, another 1 TB. Okay, another 1 TB you wanted to add. Okay, but for doing this, right, in on-premises, you have to, first you have to buy this particular hard disk, okay, that particular storage, and then uh, you have to get approval, then on top of it, you have to go ahead and you have to do that particular thing, and you have to do this particular storage in a storage, you have to do it in a right way. Okay, it will take more time, okay. But in cloud, right, by clicking one click, okay, if you wanted to go ahead and you, if you wanted to scale up or down the resources, it will be very easy by clicking the one couple of things, okay, by clicking one button, you can go ahead and you can increase the resources, you can increase the resources, that is the more major and very, very important thing. Okay. So in a simpler way, Azure offers the ability to quickly scale up and down the resources according to your business requirement, according to your business requirement. But when it comes to on-premises, it is not feasible. It is required a lot of hardware. Okay. Because you have to build your own things. You have to build the data center under data center. Again, you have to find the hardware's Okay, under on premise, and again, you have to go ahead and you have to uh, hardware. See, there are two expenditure in any company one is capital expenditure, another is operational expenditure. When it comes to capital expenditure, if you wanted to build one TB, right, you have to go ahead and you have to find, you have to go ahead and you have to 
by the hardware as well as software to install that and on top of it it is going to be available so tomorrow okay so today what 2 tb required for you okay T today 2 tb is required okay you bought 2 tb okay you bought 2 tb and after certain time okay after another year okay another year okay suddenly suddenly you another year okay you required only 1 tb okay 1 tb so you already bought 2 tb so another 1 tb is going to be waste okay 1 tb is going to be is going to be waste okay for for not waste it's a kind of you know with respect of you whether you are using or not using you have to stick with that particular thing okay that one tb so this is but in terms of suppose in cloud right in azure suppose if you wanted to go ahead and today you are using 2 db suddenly if you don't want to use it 2 db if you wanted to use it 1 tb then you can just brought back to 1 tb by by using that particular azure it is not going to be very difficult to scale up and scale down in azure so that is the one of the major important scalability second thing okay second thing cost effective cost effective when it comes to azure right when it comes to azure with azure you only pay for what you use you only pay for what you use for example you are going to create a one azure sql service azure sql service Okay, once you log into the Azure portal, I'm going to show you in com coming classes. Once you log into the, okay, once you log into the Azure portal, what is the very, very important thing? Okay, so when cost effective, another, another thing is cost effective. Okay, very, very important thing is cost effective. So here, what you are going to do, you have every resource, you have every resource in, uh, ev every resource in the sense, Whatever Azure is offering, all the resources are available. Okay, all the resources are available. Okay, all the resources are available with you or available with you in Azure. Okay, in Azure. But, but are you paying for everything? Are you paying for everything? No, no, you are not going to. Are you paying for every resource? No. Here, you need to understand. Even though resource is available, even though resource is available with you, but you are not until unless, until unless, until unless, okay, until unless if you are using that resource, if you are using that resource, okay, then only you pay the, you pay the money, you pay the money. That is the reason, that is the reason, very, very cost effective. And when it comes to on-premises, on-premises, okay, for example, a earlier mentioned on-premises, what we have to do, we have to go ahead and we have to see in cloud, right? You need not to mean, you need not to pay anything. You need not to pay anything before. But when it comes to on-premises, you have to pay for the hardware as well as software, regardless of whether you use it or not use it okay regardless of that whether you use it or not use it okay sometimes we may use it off of it okay so for example just just consider it we thought of it it's kind of you know a 2 db is the usage in for us okay for our business requirement but we used only 1 db but in on premises you have to pay you have to pay you have to pay okay for 2 db only 2 db only Okay, because this is the capital expenditure which you already made it for to buying the 1 TB, 2 TB and hardware as well as software. Irrespective of whether you use it or not use it, you have to pay, you have to pay for this particular thing. Okay, that is the reason. So in Azure, you have to pay only for what you use. Okay, that's it. That is the cost effective. Maintenance. Okay, when it comes to when it comes to maintenance perspective, maintenance perspective, okay, on premises, on premises, you have to maintain everything on premises. Okay, on premises, you have to maintain everything you have to, it's all by you, all by you, okay, all by you have to maintain everything on premises. But when it comes to Azure, when it comes to Azure maintenance part, okay, majorly who's going to maintain everything. So, here, there are a couple of things again, it matters. Okay, Azure take care of, Azure going to take care of all the maintenance, like updates, patching, and everything it is going to be taken care by 
Ajur, Ajur. So you need not to do that particular activity. Next is, uh, next, next thing is, okay, accessibility, accessibility. So on-premises perspective, again, on the other hand, require dedicated IT teams. For example, you have to maintain admin team. You have to maintain to maintain the patching, updating, and there is a DBA guys who has to take care of all the infrastructure. Okay, there are multiple teams which is required for maintaining this particular particular maintenance perspective. You have to have a dedicated teams in terms of this particular on premises. But when it comes to Azure, you need not to have any person. I mean to say, it's a partially required who knows everything about Azure. Those people will be maintaining, but up updating, patching and all the software requirements whatever it is required right they are going to maintain it they are going to maintain it we are not going to do anything from our being a customer we are not going to do any updating and patching okay that is the third third part okay next is accessibility accessibility okay very very important thing this is also one of the major thing okay accessibility okay for example when it comes to azure azure Okay, Azure services are accessible anywhere in the world with over internet, with over internet. Simple, if you have an internet, you can access it anywhere, anywhere Azure services. But when it comes to, okay, this is not, see, when it comes to on-premises, it is not going to be feasible. Always you can use it with the internet. You cannot able to access it, okay? But most of the times, okay, it can be feasible, but not like a Azure, not like a Azure. Sometimes you have to have a, you have to go to the physical location to access the servers. You have to go to the physical location for accessing the servers. Okay. Next thing is very, very important is disaster recovery, disaster recovery. Okay. Accessibility. So with internet, you can access it anywhere. Azure. Okay. You can access an, anything, okay, anywhere over the internet. Let's go with the next disaster recovery, disaster recovery, okay, disaster recovery. Using this disaster recovery, when it comes to Azure, right, Azure offers robust disaster recovery capabilities like regional, regional redundancy, automatic backups, automatic backups, for example, when it comes to disaster recovery, right? When it comes to storing the data also, when it comes to storing the data also internally, the storage mechanism, what it does, it is going to keep your data into multiple regions, multiple geographical areas, multiple, multiple regions and multiple geographical areas. Even though any disaster happening, like, you know, calamities like floods, any tsunami, all those things happens also still it is going to have a data it is going to have a data by providing the regional redundancy regional redundancy and automatic backups okay but when it comes to okay when it comes to premise on premises this can be more challenging and costly to achieve with on premises service on premises service and when it comes to this is the most important thing okay when it comes to on-premises, it is very, very costly, whatever you do. That is the reason most of the most of the IT industry, entire it, most, not most, lot of people, lot of companies which they are moving towards to the cloud. Okay, either it can be Azure or it can be AWS, it can be GCP. So the, this is the major reason. Next thing is innovation, innovation, okay. Azure constantly updates its services with the latest technology advancements. Okay, advancements like AI, machine learning, and IoT. Okay, have you heard of Azure Fabric? Okay, one of the most important, not one of the most important thing, recently they have started with different, different services. Okay, different, different services like Azure Fabric, okay, and machine learning, a lot of things, a lot of things which is part of the innovation. So, they are going to provide such things with the with us by accessing the Azure services. Okay, next thing is when it comes to implementing such technologies on on-premises would require significant of effort, time and cost. Time and cost. Okay, in a way, if I wanted to summarize it, right? If I wanted to summarize it, see Azure provides a flexible 
and cost effective and innovative environment for businesses okay businesses to operate and grow without worrying any without worrying about infrastructure management infrastructure management so simply i can main i can summarize it major differences between azure and on premises one is scalability second is cost effective and maintenance accessibility disaster recovery and innovation these are the major differences and we do have a couple of more so to make it in a shorter way i have done this video thank you guys tomorrow onwards we'll go with the one by one what are the azure blob okay and we'll come up with the one kind of small data engineering project step by step and we'll do the end to end thank you guys